Hey, Gail. Hey, Michael. How are you? Good. How are you? I am doing good. Okay, I'm just changing my name from host. Give me a second. <laughs> You're not the host? Oh, my mother didn't name me that. There we go. That's better. Huh. So I'm get I don't you saw Isaac's thing about so we'll be I, yeah, I don't think I think there's a chance we won't get to minutes, just as the FYI. That's probably the unless we do it really quickly before he leaves. That's that's my oh, because it. it's at the end. So oh, right. Uh, is he taking minutes to, no, it's Nate. Because uh gonna I want to check one thing before they hop in uh, do, 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 do. Who did, um, I'm trying, who did, who did the minutes last time? I think I did. Yeah, that's what I thought. So then I think Isaac would be the next person Are based on this. When was Nate last? Um, I'm not sure. There's Nate. And there's Isaac. Yay! Hello. Hey, all the team's all here. Hey, hi. A small but mighty team. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Well, Hello, how's it going? Well, let me call us to order since, as Gail said, we have to be brisk. Um, <laughs> so I'll call us to order at 5.02. And the question Gail and I were just figuring out, she took minutes the last time. Uh, you're on me. Okay, cool. I got to just change. I have a little cycle here and I've incorrected my cycle. So here okay. we go. And then I'll do the meeting minutes next meeting? Correct. Okay. Love there it. You know. Cool. Thank <clears throat> you all. So having figured that part out, um, let's see any public comment. I don't see any. <laughs> it's a good time saver. So you want to, we'll jump into updates. And Eric Stocker is going to join us at 530 to talk about car chargers. So, um, oh, the weird thing that was like that, that, uh, that email about, oh, you can get a free car charger at the library and at the town hall. Yeah. And they've been, the select boards had subsequent conversations and Eric seems to be um, interested in sort of, following up and he can explain it but um it's it's basically that theme just okay. moving the project down the road a little bit um so i, I guess we should look at uh stretch code faqs and logistics and such like that and nate thanks for sending the the document i don't know if everyone got to see it um cool we are tight little operation here so anything you want <laughs> anything you want to say before we give your comments? Um no, no, um I'm, I'm already. I can I can share them. Okay. Anyone have any thoughts they want to share with Nate? I did have the question about uh whether geothermal would be included in the all electric. I know they're pushing the little units that just go on the wall, but um... yeah, I can um, bust down to that. Oh. 
The word geothermal is not in your document. So, oops. Yeah. So I added, uh, I added ground source. Um, oh, yeah. that would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, mini splits is uh, I think really common. Yeah. Um, and you don't have mini splits, but we, there's like there are ducted air source pumps. So I just added um, air or ground source, which Excellent. kind of covers Thank that, you. Yep. Um, that idea. Isaac, do you have anything you want to jump in on? Uh, no, I mean, you know, I looked it over. It looks real good. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I think it was well laid out. I think it, I think it does a really good job of of anticipating some some friction points and addressing them. Like, you know, my home is in the woods. Like, so talking about, um, you know, immediately before that, it talks about solar photovoltaic will be required by any new construction utilizing fuel, uh, fossil fuel heating. So then the next question would be, well, do I have to put in, like, do I have to cut down my trees to, do I have to cut down my forest to put in solar? And that, that like, I feel like kind of is a good, the big thing is just allaying the real big softball concerns, right? Like what are the, what are the, um, what are the, the constituents going to bristle at, or what can we anticipate them bristling at? And how do we front load the information so they can, like we can de-escalate any concerns. Yeah, I agree. So I had a couple of things, just observations. So on number four, Nate, it's you you model it later on about exactly that question about, you know, my house is in the woods. But I'm wondering if we want to rather than saying who does the specialized code apply to, it could be that we say, will this impact me? You know, so the centering it on people, mm -hmm. um, yes. just sort of speaking to them. Um, and you do it later on in terms of whatever my home site is. Um, so I think it's just ripping off of that. And in the, and for the second line, you got a typo, which is, I, I think it's these building codes do not affect as opposed to this. Um, and then I guess I had two other suggestions um, under four. One is exactly to Isaac's point, I'm guessing people are going to say, what is a condition for? So I can I can guess what it is, but people will say, okay, in mm -hmm. terms of what am I thinking about? So like just defining what a condition for is might be helpful. Um, and the other, you know, the, I think, so most people who are going to come already have a house in Shootsbury. So this is really already anyone, have one? a house in Shootsbury. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the people where there's going to be, you know, some friction or concern is if the renovation. And so I was just thinking that although you say it's greater than a thousand square feet of doubling the size, I don't know if there's a way of sort of giving an example, you know, so like it's, I mean, all it is is redundant, but you know, if your house is 2000 square feet, what does that mean? What does that mean? Um, yeah. Um, cause I think otherwise people have to do the, the quote unquote math in their head, but if you sort of give them a sense of mm -hmm. what the scale is, or if you're adding a, you know, a deck that doesn't make it, you know, you're not eligible. That's not That's a not condition for, yeah, no. um, cause I think it just sort of, again, putting them in there in the equation. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the only other thing I think might be good and maybe towards the end after how do we adopt it is enforcement um not that we want to encourage people to get away with but it's like who's watching me on this thing um and i'm assuming it's the building inspector but it'd be worth sort of just naming that i want to capture this because uh we're getting close to needing to turn this around yeah i can send it to you i, I just highlighted stuff so okay but a deck, a deck is a good example because then that you can con contrast that with conditioned space mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay, great. Um, I think overall it's excellent. Yeah. So, you did a lot of homework. Yeah. It's it's a largely uh, just a restructuring of um, the DOER FAQ, but um, 
you know, a lot of it's like simplifying the language because that FAQ is pretty technical in my opinion. Uh, yeah. And just a flag for folks, um, you know, one reference that I added to this was the actual technical guidance. Um, so there was a really good question about what is a passive house? Um, yeah. And I, I looked for a couple different places where I might um, drop a reference, but I, I decided just to say, see this DOER technical guidance below, um, you know, just encouraging people to, if they want to dig deep, they can, they can do that. Um, yeah. yeah, Michael, if you if you have like a version that just is slightly marked up, I'm, I'm happy to wordsmith that. Yeah. Or if you have language, that's great. Um, no, I just I just it's it's really sort of placeholder, but I'll I'll send it to you, and that'll I think you'll get it. It's not gonna, whatever you do, it'll be fine. Okay. Um, and then I think we can. I what we talked about is posting it on the website, um, mm -hmm. and then making it available. Um, probably in a link during the zoom thing we can just sort of put it well we can't we don't have chat so but there's going to be another town announcement with um, oh that's right a reminder and that either includes it, these questions in the body or refers to the website perfect that sounds great when would that go out uh let's see we're on we're on the sixth today uh the 26th is the monday right it is, and we yeah. should specify Monday because that's an odd day for a town meeting. Yeah, I would say like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, the week prior, um, something like that. Uh, you okay. that. Sorry, I was just going to say that uh, that announcement with the FAQ could invite um, people to submit questions that they'd like to have addressed. Oh, awesome. The event. Good. Excellent. Will you write up the blurb again, Nate? Sure. Thank you. I think that's excellent. And then we can get Chris the questions in advance, um, which I'm sure he'll appreciate. It. What's the name of the other person coming? I don't know yet. Oh, okay. So yeah. Chris <laughs> and uh, Chris and a code specialist. Code specialist. Oh, there you go. Yeah, oh. somebody who really knows it inside out food. Um, yeah, they were, they're, they're able to, to bring in, I guess. So. To, to Isaac's point, can you tell um, Nate from the uh, reactions or responses at the Amherst or Northampton meeting, what the questions of concern were? Or did um, you already do that to cover this in this FIQs? So yeah, concern, um, I mean, there's the cost concern, right? Yeah. Uh, cost, you know, how much is it going to cost to build um, in the area? And then I think there, if I recall from one of the, uh, one of the Amherst ECAC meetings that I watched, um, you know, does this kind of code implementation affect the prices of existing homes, right? So you can imagine if it, um, if, and there's not a lot of building in Shootsbury anyway, but if it became prohibitively expensive to build in Shootsbury uh, because of uh, super stringent codes, then you've got a sort of a supply and demand issue yeah. that, you know, that might affect conceivably uh, home prices uh, for existing homes. Would it be seen as added value, though? I know people can look at it both ways, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know a couple of people that are that are like that are in the process of building, like just building new homes. So I think this is really prescient because um, I think they are, you know, subject to the the um, the stretch code as as of now, and then you know. Depending on, I think, depending on how things go, if they do vote it in the specialized codes, I would wonder if the, you know, if things in process, that's a good, that's a good thing. Like, all right, if I am starting to build now, um, you know, when does the stretch, like, am I 
subject to the stretch code, you know, like how, when will I be subject to the stretch code? If I've gotten these paperwork, this paperwork and if I've started construction. Yeah. That's a great question. We should either have it in here or make sure Chris responds to it. Yeah. That's it. That directly affects like, how does it affect someone? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then I think also, you know, we can, we can acknowledge that there is a big upfront cost. There is that reference to like, you know, over the long term, you know, you will save money, just like getting solar panels on your house, right? It's like, if you buy solar panels, it's going to cost a lot of money up front, but, you know, you, you will recoup that expense in seven years or eight years, depending, and then, you know, it'll pay for itself. But um, I was wondering, you know, are there supports? Because I, from what I recall, I don't know if this is still accurate, um, mass save, would um, you know do some uh, you know support for mini split um, like new mini splits um, you know if you were doing a renovation and you had single pane windows and you were going to replace with double pane windows there'd be like a, a zero percent loan like the heat loan situation so it does it make sense to kind of acknowledge the upfront cost and then also like you know mention possible resources to look into to help mitigate those upfront costs knowing that in the long run the you know this you know these this kind of construction is going to save you money money with its energy efficiency yeah the language that i found oh, okay in the yeah EOER is yeah um is around is structured around this concept but i i do have to say like the modeling that i looked at um the OER, uh, uh, you know, public outreach materials, I did not see a lot that really dug into the specialized code. You know, what does that, that extra 10% efficiency cost and how does that factor into uh, you know, that long-term payoff, how much longer it takes to um, uh, convert, uh, you know, assuming it does. So it is, that was like something I was digging for and would be one of my questions for, for Chris, for sure, the, the code specialist. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna move us on just in the spirit of time. Um, did you all get to see the logistics suggestion I had in terms of how we do the choreography um, and, and who's doing what? And I could just, so, I mean, what I was thinking about is it'll be a Zoom meeting, so, I can be the host and welcome people. Um, then I think if it makes sense, just hand it over to Nate. Nate, I mean, you could do like sort of a high level. This is this is what it is, and this is why you know I'll I'll probably say something, but be, you'll be more targeted. Um, this is what it is. This is we got Chris here and the, the specialist to be named later, um, and intro to them, and then they could do the. Um, the conversation and then I'm happy to facilitate the Q and A. Um, and then I was thinking sort of behind the scenes. I I'm not sure if we'll have a waiting room or not, but Gail, I was thinking if if maybe you can just sort of if we do have one, you can do the admitting thing. Yeah. Um and then during the Q and A, Isaac and Nate, you guys can just sort of like capture if there's things that people raise that we have to be aware of um to sort of follow up on either in writing or for conversation's sake. Mm -hmm. um, and do, do we have a sense of how long Chris thinks the two of them will speak? Do you get a sense of that? I do not know. Okay. Yeah, I'm not certain if that's in. I, I mean, response. When, um, we have a, when we have a meeting like that, do we have chat? I don't think so, no. right? So no. we can't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I asked Grace, because it's interesting when you set up my town government, 99% of the time, I just do an open, regular open meeting, and there's actually another option, which is the public something or other, where you don't need an open meeting law. And so I asked Grace, you know, should I pick that? And she said, no, it's still a regular meeting. So I don't even know if that other option. Really? Would, yeah. So, but okay. I think our, our Zoom channel doesn't let us have chat. So it is unfortunate. Um, mm -hmm. So, so we'll just keep an, hand, an eye on raised hands and yeah. Yeah, okay. I think we could do it. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how many people show up. Um, I think what I want to make sure 
and maybe they, between now and then you can get a sense, but you know, like the intro, you and me part, I don't know, that's like five to seven minutes, depending on like how much we, and then they talk, just having enough time for Q and A. Um, Cause it's, I think it's always dissatisfying to people say we ran out of time. Um, I mean, we, we can, that's, we could probably go longer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but if that sounds good, I think we're, you know, we're between the town announced communications and the FAQ and this, I think we're, we're doing good. Um, so, so I'm going to move us along and hop over CCA for a minute. Um, Gail wanted permission to talk to um, PV installers and to get pricing because when we talked to the finance committee, you know, part of what they were stuck on was they need to get a sense of cost. Is, did I get that right, Gail? Not quite. Um, okay. What I, when we when we went to the FinCom, they said you know this floating dollar wasn't going to work, but if you had a specific project with a a scope of work and a dollar estimate, that's something to talk about. So what I would propose to PV Squared, if you authorize me to do this, is for them to come to town, make an assessment of where we are, what is amenable to adding solar, how would we do it, um, and estimate, give us now an estimate of what that assessment would be. That would be one thing. And we would take that with a scope of work of what's entailed in the assessment to the FinCom. FinCom says, fine, here's your money. Then we get PV Square to come do it and give us specific recommendations aimed at what we've decided was going to be a net uh, zero of the energy use. So it's not going to be evened out in terms of, of installations, but given the net gain on the solars. And then we've got a basis of getting into the fall uh, grant cycle application. Uh, that would require that um, the report has been made to green communities that the weatherization work has been completed on the municipal buildings uh, by August 26th. Okay, let's let's split them up. So in terms of the giving you permission to do it, I mean, I think we should just, you know, vote, make a motion and vote on it. But it, it, it sure seems like a, a good thing to do. And if you're willing to sort of Shepherd, that I I'm appreciative. Uh, either Nate, Isaac, you guys thoughts good with that? Good to, good to get the info for sure. Yeah, and I mean one maybe one question I would have is um, uh, how do we decide what like do we get one estimate or do we you know how do we um, think about um, it's not exactly a bid, right? Because they're delivering a right. free estimate, yeah. right? So it's sort of like a... But what I want an estimate for is now, what would the assessment cost? Yeah. It, okay. that, that's the piece. Gotcha. And, that, and that's to get the base <laughs> data so that we can make an application. But what would come out of the assessment is a recommendation. And then there would be mm -hmm. costs associated with that. So there, what I'm looking for is a, an estimated cost and scope of work for an assessment and take that Thanks. to the income. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, I just thought uh, you would call them in and say, you know, we're thinking about these buildings. You know, what, what's the, what's the feasibility of the solar, and what would the, what would the, you know, what would the installations cost? But you're just looking, how much would it cost for us to ask you these questions? For them to make the assessment. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I mean, they might do it free, but we, I don't think we've ever. They asked might. For that. Yeah. Um, and and then they would say, okay, give us a recommendation. We'll take that for the grant and we'll come back to you mm -hmm. to do the work. Give us an estimate of what you're recommending would cost. Yeah. That's a different estimate. But um, yeah. Well, I would say, I, anyone want to make a motion to authorize Gail to do this project? I would like to make a motion to authorize Gail to, uh, to do this. Approach yeah. PV squared for an assessment. Yeah, to approach uh, for an assessment. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Awesome. Any other conversation about this? Okay, let's just do a vote. Gail. Yes, thank you. Nate. Aye. Isaac. Aye. And I'm an aye. 
unanimous. Go for Thank it. You. Thank you for offering, Gail. Yeah. Look forward to hearing what happens. Yeah. It's only taken us a year and a half to get this far on this one. So <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> um, so on CCA, are there any updates of note? Um, they so with CCA, I had um, put together a kind of a two pager that captured our discussion from our last meeting. Um, and I think the action item that we had settled on was that I would develop that. And then you could be a conduit to select board um, for that communication. But it's effectively um, two pages that um, that goes through, I think this is a um, kind of our discussion. And then uh, it includes kind of testimonials um, from you know, the people that we engaged uh, around cloning. So, um, yeah, I don't know if, if you, my sense was that this was something that you, I would like sort of pass the baton to you and then you could be the conduit to select board or if it's something that we want to review as a committee. Um, but effectively it's just our discussion, um, the reasons why ECAC's making this recommendation, where we are on the timeline, mm -hmm. um, sort of big picture, uh, just highlighting that and then the testimonials um, that we obtained from other, you know, folks in other uh, towns, neighboring towns. Who worked with Colonial, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the ask for the select board would be to then allow us to actually ask Colonial to sort of engage with the town and take, take the next step. That's right. Yeah, it's it is the the selection process, like the point of selection for the. Uh, so I, this so, I'm always thanking you for doing this work, but thank you for doing this work. I mean, this looks good. Um, if you, I'm just trying to think about timing since we've got the stretch code stuff coming up. If you send this out to us, we, you know, if. If people feel like we want to look at it, we can look at it at the March meeting, and then I can queue it up for bringing the select board in March. So we'll have passed the February 26th event. Right. Um, and we'll sort of um, hop over into March and do this thing. And uh, I think the sweet spot of March is that it's before the speed up to town meeting. So we probably have a little bit of um, select board bandwidth in there. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing they won't actually do anything if they need to do something. Like, I mean, if they just say, we're fine with it, work with Becky, select them, um, that's easy. We can just go forth. If there's something else to do, we'll see. But um, does that sound like a reasonable approach? Yeah. They'll, they'll want formal stuff at the meeting to be able to vote on it. Contact name, number, information, all that good stuff. Yeah. And I think, I did, do you know, Nate, like what is, what's colonial need if we're selecting them? Is there paperwork that we have to sign off on as a, I don't know if we're a client or they're, they're taking on representation? Is a contract? I would, I would assume so. Okay. So I think probably that's the one thing we might need to know between, you know, now and taking the select board is a, uh, just what the paper trail will be. But I think if we bring this forth and, and know those answers, um, then we can take the next step and sort of go. And what a contract would look like. What are the terms in the contract? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I think that's to sort of segue into what we're gonna talk about with Eric in a moment. That was one of the conversations with this um, firm that offered up the deal was it was, the town was expected to sign on something, but you didn't really know contractually what you were agreeing yeah. to. Um, so it's it's the same kind of thing. But does that sound so? If somewhere in the next weeks to you know 
maybe after the 26th, does Nate send this out to us? Or whenever you feel like it's appropriate, Nate, send it out to us. We'll look at it, and then we'll talk about it on in our March meeting. Yeah, I'll send it out um, uh, right after this, this meeting. Cool. OK, great. And, uh, I think also it would be good to keep sight of <clears throat> you know the um, the consortium of smaller towns that are already in um, you know a community choice aggregation, and you know if we haven't started conversations with them about joining, you know we want to you know see like are there inroads to this and like you know and know that if we're you know if they're going to be up for renewal in three years, then we don't want to sign a contract with community choice for five years. Because we want to have an opportunity to kind of get into that. I, I mean, I'm I'm just thinking logistically and time wise. If that's something that we want to do, it's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I, we're not there yet in terms sure. of like like this is just to get them to represent us, and then they got to go out to the world. But yeah, totally, of course, totally agree. I agree. We <laughs> want to keep our options open. Yeah, um, and, that, and conversations uh, with some of these other groups certainly wouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, we're right on time. Eric, are you impressed? Very impressed. Okay, that was the goal. <laughs> <laughs> so Isaac has to bail at 545, but I think we can have, you know, if not the whole conversation, most of it, and then we can go because we lose our quorum when he leaves. But um, so I don't know, Isaac, do you know Eric? And Nate, do you know Eric? Uh, not personally. Um, by name. Okay. Eric's I've met Nate. I don't know uh, at other meetings and so forth. But hi, hi, Isaac. How are you? Uh, nice to meet you. I, you I, I'm on the fire department. And you were uh, part of the. Uh, part oh, there of the, you go. Yeah, yeah. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. So I my own name half the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, Eric, thank you for joining us. And uh, I don't know. Do you want it? You want to kick it off because you guys, the select board, had the most recent conversation about the electric chargers. So I was going to try to update people, but you got the most information. Well, I'm a little unclear on the where this money is all coming from, but basically there's, uh, as I understand it, as I understand it, I could be wrong. Maybe anyone can jump in and correct me on this if they have a better idea. Um, there's a bunch of money coming in from um, sort of funny money from the government to build out the electrical charging system in the, in the country. And basically we have one company um whose name is livingston uh wait a minute i'll get it for you livingston there are too many things going on here <laughs> well, yeah, i'm sure that's not i'm not the only one livingston um livingston energy energy systems um is the first one who want to put in they've said they they'll put in like two high-speed charging stations in the town, direct DC for no charge, no charge to us. A little unclear on how much that would last over time. I mean, that is to say, there's, you know, there's like software updates and the machine, you know, I don't know, I don't know exactly. We'd have to get all that straightened out. But one thing is clear to me is that um, if you go to the National Grid, web grid website, there's a whole list of other companies who also are doing the same thing. Basically, I think it's one of these things where like, if you're a solar charging company, it's in your interest to find Shootsbury up because you get paid, you get the grant money, you get the whatever. Shootsbury doesn't pay anything, but you get the, the credit for doing it. Um, and I believe National Grid has to, um, and all utilities have to, by law have to have some percentage of their power has to be in this program. Do you know more about this, Nate? Am I saying the right thing, sir? Well, um, there, there absolutely are um, a number of, of companies working in this space for sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, and if you, I mean, I downloaded the list and I, I would have, I should have probably put a link in the uh, somewhere so you guys could all see it. But I mean, there's, there's a uh, level two charges. There's one. I mean, there's five pages of uh, of different companies. I can show you this. I can't show it on the screen because I can't even. I couldn't find it in my computer if I had to. <laughs> but it's in there somewhere. Um, and I, I just to jump in. I mean, I think what I took away from the conversation um, at the select board is that 
it seems like a sweet deal, but we didn't do our due diligence and say, hey, how about all these other companies? You know, this particular one is based in upstate New York, doesn't really have a, a foothold in Massachusetts. Um, you know, and then they did some research in terms of the whole app, you know, so like there's different apps that you can use when you roll up to this thing and how do you pay for it? And so I think, Eric, you were thinking about putting out an RFP from the town to sort of solicit engagement. Was that what you were thinking? One of my ideas was if there are, in fact, all these other companies doing this, why don't we send out an RFP, to write an RFP and send it out that basically says, Hey, here we are. We want, we want, we want to, we want to, we want to have you guys put in a system and see what people respond to and yeah. say what they offer us. Yeah. For example, um, the the company Livingston is offer, offering us two chargers, one at the presumably at the town hall and one at the new library. I mean, I'm not convinced, for example, you couldn't convince somebody to put in three charges, one at the school, one at the town hall, and one at the library, or for, just as an example. I mean, there might be different ways we could leverage it to get more things happening. Um, if you get to understand this, like the structure of it, and also the, you know, the, the what kind of maintenance will they provide? What kind of service if, if it goes down? What are the costs to the town in that regard? Um, right. You know, because I remember I was telling the ECAC in a previous meeting when we were discussing this, that, you know, I was at the Greenfield DMV and I was talking to one of the instructors and they have a high speed charger. And he said, you know, this this high speed charger, it, it's breaking like every week. There's somebody out here putting in a new chip, you know, like so we want to we want to kind of do some due diligence on you know, what is the quality of the of the merchandise that they're providing? What kind of service and support is going to be there? And also, like, wh what is it structurally? Like, I don't even understand how it would work. We would have this facility, but, you know, it would be powered by National Grid. You know, the, the people of the town would have to pay per kilowatt hour who would recoup those charges. Like, is that, does some of that go to the town? Does all that go to National Grid or to Livingston or whoever puts it in? Well, the, 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 the two cent answer to that, and I don't know, again, I agree 100%, we'd have to vet all these questions. But um, what I've been told is that they, that, that, that we, the town, establishes a rate that we want to charge people to use the charger. We can make that a rate that makes money. We can make that, make that a rate that breaks even. We can make that a mate rate that's subsidized. We can do whatever we want, basically. Um, and, um, if obviously if we did it so it broke even, then it would break even in theory. Um, so that's so that's a, that's the answer to the rate question. I mean, in theory, that the, now you have a credit card or a some kind of card. I'm not quite sure what I think any old credit card will do is how they would have to do it. Um, but you would stick in the machine and you would charge your car and it would hit your credit card for that amount of money, and the town wouldn't essentially even see it. That's how I understand that. Yeah. Into the town coffers to make sure that the you know like is the town paying the bill on the electrical is the town paying the maintenance and upkeep for the the chargers like if a service guy comes out a service call like a replacement of a, a microchip or a board that needs to happen i mean those are those are kind of questions of interest and you know if we're if we're establishing the rates at a break even not factoring in maintenance and repairs or, you know, factoring in like a percentage that we're going to get whacked for the credit card, you know, people using a credit card, you know? Yeah. No, these are all good questions. I mean, I think that I mean, my sense is that not only would we do an RFP, we should also have a list of questions that we want any respondent to the RFP to answer the questions. And you're asking several of them. That I have a list that's a lot longer than that, but it, it includes those questions you've mentioned, and I think they're good questions. Yeah, I would uh, ask also about metering that would be visible to us so that we know what comes in, what's used out. One of the things that's so frustrating about our solar system here in town is that the meters are not readily available. So we have no information on our actual output, much less, uh, we have numbers on energy use by the town, aggregate, across, but there's not metering available, at least to our committee, um, at, for each of the sets of solar panels, so we have any information about uh, production. 
So here's a question. I mean, what we've done, like with the CCA stuff, is sort of Nate's done a, a great job of reaching out to different towns to find out like what their experience is. You know, it seems like one way to do this is rather than recreate the RFP, if there's someone else who's been smart and thoughtful, we can steal from them. Um, but it requires figuring out like, I don't know if National Grid could share that information or, or how one would do that, but um, it seems like that would be an easy way to sort of get, at least get a starting point. Um, presumably they'd be asking similar questions that we would. Um, if not, we can compress the world to come up with the questions and have everyone steal from us, but. Um, what are you su suggesting instead of an RFP, I'm sorry? No, I say in, in doing the RFP, rather oh. than coming up with a like our own list, if, if someone, like if Northampton put together a list for an oh, RFP. I see. yeah, yeah, okay. Let's, let's grab that. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing, I mean, my sense is this is definitely worth doing it seems like there's a, a pragmatic interest um it's definitely more tangible than some of the other things we've talked about um but it's it's the bandwidth part like we're, we're a little anemic at this point eric we need a few more people on our committee we've shrunk um, I've, I've noticed that i've noticed that <laughs> we're, we're high quality you know yeah we need some more people well maybe you had noticed all the energy problems in the world have been solved so there's, <laughs> yeah. there's no, was, no need for this committee anymore. Exactly. That was that's got to be it. It must so, be it. So I I guess I'm open before we lose Isaac to think about how we put this in the queue. Um, you know, and I think it's sort of it in some regard. I mean, we we can deputize Eric to be an informal part of ECAC for this project but he's got his hands full with the select board stuff so i think it's i would imagine that eric you're sort of a, the liaison between the select board and us in terms of going back right. and forth and we can sort of add this to our our list of stuff to do um we were just talking about so we've got this information session with, um on february 26th about the stretch code um so that'll be interesting and then um if that goes forward Presumably, we'd have a, a town warrant article on it. Um, and then CCA, we were just discussing. Uh, Nate's done research, so we're going to make a recommendation to the select board about going with Colonial, which will be the um, could be the representative for us in terms of the CCA market. So we were just discussing that might come forward to the select board in March as sort of, Great. Um, you know, saying, can, can we sign up with these people to be our representative? But we don't know, like, what that looks like contractual yet. So that's a little bit of our due diligence between now and then. Um, and so I think this is another one. Um, and so just figuring, I'm, I'm guessing probably wouldn't come up to air until after town meeting. If that just seems like it's the minimum sanity, but just to how, how do other people think being given our- The only our problem time. I see with that, and I, I understand the I understand the issues of this of the personnel aspect of it. There's just not enough personnel to do all this the research, but we sort of have these people who are sort of saying, we'll give you stuff. Right. And part right. of me goes, well, okay, we should get on this a little bit more. You know, like, <laughs> hey, we got, we got somebody's going to give us, by the way, they, they were, they, they've evaluated this Livingston company, who's the one who's actually said they do it. And I'm not advocating that company, but I'm just telling you that they have said that if they were charging for what they're doing, uh, it would be three hundred thousand dollars. So we've basically got, for whatever reason, we've I've, a little unclear to me where this is money's all coming from. But I don't think Livingston's a nice, a bunch of nice guys saying, "Oh, let's give you three hundred grand." Maybe they are. I don't think so. No. Um, has, has Becky talked to them, like, to get a sense? Because I think one of the issues was. How long is this offer on the table? Oh, it's gone. Well, they wanted to sign before the end of the year, but you know, like in reality, if we if we said we're still interested, like, is it really gone? Yeah, my, my sense is that um, as recently as a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, they called me. I mean, I know that I've <laughs> talked to them too. So, I mean, um, I think to answer your question, Becky has talked to them some. I think that I think we need a, more of a what's the word? We're, we're a little bit disjointed in our response to them, I think, and because for good reason. I'm not saying that there's any reason not to be, but we are. <laughs> um, and that's what I was hoping maybe an RFP type of situation might actually right. yeah. line us up a little bit more. And, and so you know, get, that makes get sense. Us, 
thinking about it. I have to, I have to get going, but I'd be happy to help support, um, you know, doing some outreach to different constituencies, like different people on that list and try to gather more information. If that, if that's, if that's helpful or, or at least be somebody to help review the information as it comes in from whoever gathers it. That's huge. Thank you, Isaac. Yeah. Uh, something else too. We might use this as a, um, an interest to get somebody on the committee that, that, that we, the ECAC are looking toward EVs in town. If you're interested, come work with us, help us get this figured out to make it work. Yeah. I'm not quite sure about the open meeting law aspect of things, but I mean, can we have a working committee, so to speak, that like just comes up with an RFP or the, I just, I'm a little unclear on how much you can do and not do well, <laughs> behind the scenes, so to speak. Technically, if you create a working group, it's a public body. So even like, even if there's one person from the select board, one person from ECAC, one person from FinCom, even like in the past, I used to think, oh, everyone's under a quorum. But in recent years, you know, talking to, Grace and others, it seems like as soon as you define it as a working group, it becomes a public body. Um, so it's, it's a gray area. I think it's how people interpret it, but- Requiring requiring minutes and public opening and all of that, yeah. Yeah, all that stuff. Which is fine. Um, but, but I think, but having different perspectives would make sense. Like I yes. can imagine, you know, like to take Isaac up on his offer, like Eric, if you want to represent Select Board and Isaac was willing to do ECAC and we could get someone to say from FinCom, um, that would be, I think, we and, and Becky, you know, that's for people to sort of work on getting an RFP. Um, and we can sort of, as you're, you know, talking about unifying sort of our efforts. Um, and it seems like if we have an RFP turning around and like what Nate did with this, the CCA folks, is we developed a list of questions or he did it, we reviewed it yeah. and sent it out to the company and said, please answer these questions. So it might not even be really an RFP it could right. just be an inquiry because right now, I mean, your skepticism is well-founded. Yeah. So I think what we want to do is get over the hump of skepticism to say, we have enough information and we've done enough due diligence that we can actually proceed with whoever it is that's going to be um, and send it back to Livingston and maybe the whole list, if we want to send it to the whole list. See, you know, it was very clear when Nate sent it out that I think there were, you know, there were three companies that, that do their, or representing towns in the CCA. And one said, I think we were too small, right? And then the other one was sort of out of the region. So they didn't care about us. And it, and one of and one of those two pointed us to Colonial. And Colonial gave us great answers and was very supportive. So, it, you know, it became clear that through that process, it was affirming that Colonial was really the match for us. Um, and it seems like in some regard, I mean, the conversation we had with select board and Becky around the CCA was that we weren't legally required to do an RFP. We might not be required to do an RFP for this because we're really trying to just gather information about who we- um, Think this the same way, yeah. yeah. Be, it would happen much sooner. Isaac, I, you gotta leave? Yeah, I gotta go. go but um, okay. let, me know, let me know when you guys decide what the next meeting, just um, send me the info on the next meeting. Eric, if you want, I'm happy to work with you. And um, okay. yeah, right. um, you know, if you, the next time Livingston calls you, you can ask also, are you working with anyone else in the area? And that might be a way to point us to-, to Yeah, we um, have asked that and, the, and they yeah. aren't I mean, okay. but at this Got point, it. but that, you know. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll see. Of course, they claim they'll fix it everything immediately and <laughs> won't cost for free. Yeah, of blah, course. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah, yeah. Get it in writing. All right. I'll see you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Isaac. Isaac. Bye. Um, so, did, how's that sound in terms of the information gathering stuff, Eric? I mean, it sounds good. When I mean, I guess I was maybe using the RFP a little bit more of a sort of a generic sense, and it does seem to me that you're right. A list of questions, just to ask people, and just sort of say, you know. It's our sense that um, that you and other people like you are providing this service to communities. And are you interested in dealing with us? And if you are, can you answer the following questions? That's really all we're. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll get one yeah. answer. Maybe we'll get ten answers. I have. I really don't know. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think the response will be indicative. I mean, that's you know, we had a small subset of three, um, or you know, a group of three that we were looking for CCA. But you know, if we go to that whole list. It could be that we get, you know, two, 10. I can't imagine we're going to get the whole list of response, but that all of a sudden they're self selecting anyway. Um, right. So, you know, as a process, maybe since Isaac is 
offering. You know, if you and he want to get together on the list of questions, um, and then we can figure out, like, I mean, if nothing else, between you and ECAC, we could sort of be thinking partners to get this thing out the door. Um, and I think you and Isaac can sort of probably do that without, you know, you're not really, you're not a working group. So you can just do that on the fly and you'd have a partner. And then if it needs to come back to ECAC for our March meeting, I think we can easily prioritize that. Um, in fact, what I think what might make sense is if you guys put together the questions and then get it to us, we can have more time at the March meeting to say, what did we miss? And sort of figure yeah. out the process for getting out the door so that we're, you know, it's not just Eric trying to figure out like, what are the good questions to ask? Yeah, um, I know. And, uh, but I, I think your, your sense of timing makes sense. You know, we should get on this and, yeah. um, who, and we might learn the timing doesn't matter too, you That's know? That's also true. <laughs> That's one of the questions I guess that I should ask. It isn't on here, but what are the time constraints here? Um, Gail? Eric, uh, in that list of vendors, uh, are the, do they give the addresses or do you know where they where they sit? I mean, they that might be- not do that. And I, I don't know, I do not know the answer to that. I, I, that's one okay. question I have actually, uh, sure. is where you know, they give you a list of all the people that are, that are certified. Um, Okay. Actually, Massachusetts, I believe the state certifies them as. Um, oh, but they could I be would... sitting in Brockton for all we know. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, okay. There's a list of. Uh, and you got this list from the National Grid website. Uh, I just went from the National Grid web website and messed around, and I honestly can't. It's called the qual. It's called the qualified EVSE, all capital letters. So electric vehicle. I don't know what S stands for. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, EVSC uh, list. It says qualified Massachusetts qualified EVSC list. Uh, okay. Okay. And I will try to find the link. I have the link to it somewhere because my son was asked me about it. He lives up in Vermont, okay. but he was curious about it. So I did find it and I sent it to him. And I honestly, I can probably find it when I just haven't had time to do that today. Well, um, I'd be happy to go check that list and get some locations on those folks. So we have a finite list and not this. Cool. Yeah, that would be great because that's going to be it's, really that's one of the biggest problems right now is, is who do we send it to? Yep. I mean, okay. so, you know, that would be great. I mean, to come yeah. up with a list of, of questions um, is good. Yeah. And I would say, Eric, if you want to maybe email us the questions you have. Yes. Because we can respond to you. Yes. Um, and that's not an open meeting law violation. So you can you can then get our feedback and then you can hook up with Isaac and, you know, Take all that feedback and come up with a list that we can sure add. i will try to send out a list of the questions and a list of um and, and the, the link to that website okay. i'll try to find it if i just send it to you michael as the chair can you just forward it to everybody does that make sense if you just send it to ecac at shootsbury.org we all get it oh well, there you go we have the technology i guess we're I so efficient <laughs> energy efficient <laughs> I don't know if it's energy. Or free. Well, it could, may, might be, might be energy. Who knows? Yeah. But I, I read think a book called once called the uh, the carbon footprint of, of of everything, including the 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 period at the end of the sentence or something like that. Was, you know, it just you know everything's got a carbon footprint, right? So anyway, that's sort of cool. Well, okay. I can do that. Yeah, I I think this is a great next step, and I appreciate you bringing it forward because I the select board ECAC bridge is really a is useful so no, I, th I think so i mean it's, this is this uh, i can't see any reason why the select board should be doing this on its own it's, it's we have a committee that's designed to do this so right. that, let's get with it do it cool but, but to, to to get it rolling and all that i think is a great idea and i think gail your idea of the addresses is fantastic okay, okay. um all right, so um, I will send you everybody that list, and I will send it to ECAC, and I'll send it the uh, link, and I will um, I'll talk to Isaac, and um, I guess the thing to do is maybe maybe yeah, for everybody could come up with a list of questions, I suppose. Well, if you if you got your list, I mean, I think what we've done, you know, in the past with the ECA is Nate came up with a list, and he floated it by us, and then we, you know, in a meeting talked about it. But I think in this context, sure. we can just. We could just come up and send you stuff so that if it made sense in March, you know, we could say, here's the final meeting. Um, what do we miss? 
and you know, we just have a quick conversation. We'll know by then, hopefully, who we're sending it to. Um, yeah, and, and it could be then, in terms of sort of following through, it it could be asking, you know, Becky or Geneva to just send out these letters to these people with this set of questions. It depends on like how we get it out the door. But if we're going to do that, we have to have it all packaged with, you know, who we're sending it to, what the questions are, and feel comfortable about it. So. Yeah, I, I don't think we need a formal RFP. So I mean, I, that's yeah, a, I right. probably think I'm Agreed. thinking more generic. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, whatever. The, whatever. A letter that had all those questions in it. Yeah. Saying we're interested, yeah. we'd probably yeah. do, do the same yeah. thing, yeah. or or Nate, more actually. Nate, I'm just wondering, do you wanted to share your thoughts, like your experience with the CCA people in terms of them responding to your questions, like how it worked or felt. Yeah, you know, I think. Um, you, you sort of outlined how, uh, you know, the kind of feedback we got you know, received from uh, these service providers. And I think, you know, one of our objectives was in putting together that list of questions was to have a basis for making the decision, um, making a recommendation to the select board, but also, um, you know, being able to explain to, you know, townspeople, like how we ended up, you know, where we, eventually will end up, um, right? So it's just part of the, you know, even if it's not a formal RFP, um, you know, just having that paper trail of the kinds of questions that we're asking and um, you know, the basis upon which we, you know, are ultimately making recommendation or arriving at a decision. Yeah, um, yeah that's crucial. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I, it, it just seems like the, each company is gonna approach this differently. It's hard, I mean, it's shocking that we got identified by Livingston and not another town, you know, but there's some reason behind it, unless yeah. it's just chance. But I can imagine another company like Shrewsbury, really? 1,700 people? <laughs> I don't think so. They probably think we're Shrewsbury or something. <laughs> you know, they probably do. Or, you know, bad art, artificial intelligence or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but yeah, I, I've wondered that myself. <laughs> Now, you know, that would be really sweet if we went with them and they invested in us and then they figured out that we really were not Shrewsbury. That would be a beautiful thing. I know. <laughs> God. Well, we should let you go. And I think we should wrap up since we're no longer a quorum. Um, so, Gail, as cool. I predicted, we didn't get to our minutes. But Eric, what are you going to say? No, no, just I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll send that stuff out. I'll try to do it uh, probably tomorrow. I don't think we'll get to it tonight, but. So, Sounds good. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for coming and getting this going. All right. Yeah. Well, hopefully we just got to figure out how to keep it going. <laughs> yes. There's a lot, a lot yeah. of good ideas in town that just sort of, uh, you know, next thing. We're, yeah. We're, we're a do it kind of committee. Good. I love that. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. See you later. You got to take care. Great. So, Gail, I think we're just, we'll do the minutes next time. Yeah. Um, and, so we got February 26th is our um, presentation thing. And then I, th I think, did, did we, I'm trying to look to see if we put down an ECAC meeting for um, March yet. I don't think we have one. No, we don't. So we could, I mean, we might want to just wait for Isaac, but there, are there any, Tuesdays in March that are bad. Um, I mean, we could do the, it seems like the fifth might be a little bit soon, but the 12th might be worse. Could, could we make sure that we have uh, it on a non select board meeting night? Yes. I mean, the only reason that Eric could come tonight is that we're, that, you know, if, as long as we're off cycle, then. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so hard because. They don't get posted, so you got to ask Becky or do the math. And sometimes it's an, you know there's like an exception, um, but I think that's a good point. So why don't I ask Becky um, when select board meetings are in March, and I can go from there, and then I can just email everybody out um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's a great that's a great catch because if we're going to circle back with Eric, he's got to be present. Yeah, yeah. he's got to be made available. Yeah, yeah. I love that we've established a template for how to do this stuff with CCA. That's that's, that's a very good approach. Uh, yep. Cool. So 
I should have adjourned the meeting when Isaac left or whatever, but um, I'll. We will just note in the minutes that my he left at. Yeah, we can't. Forty-five. We're going to fade away because we can't really vote to adjourn. <laughs> I'm just going to have to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we will just in, in your minutes you just won't ever note that we adjourned yep i'm writing it right now <laughs> <laughs> and the ecac just stayed in stasis until next month so okay well short of that have a wonderful evening it's and good you to all see you guys okay see, see, you. see you soon thank you yeah.